G'day everybody, Nick Dingle here again with another WPF tutorial. This time we are having a look at XAML styles, okay, what they are, how you use them, and then how you target different areas of your application using those styles. So I've given you a bit of a sneak preview in this video, guys. We're going to be working with the calculator for the next couple of videos, but for today we are just going to work on styling it, making it look a lot prettier, because that's what XAML styles are all about. So you can see I have a very crappy looking text box at the top there. I have terrible looking buttons which are all clumped together. So we are going to make this thing look good and well as good as I can make it look. But we're going to give you the tools to make it look good I should say. So what a XAML style is it allows you to create a style which you apply to a whole set of controls and let's say that be you want to change all the background colors of every button, you want to change the font, you want to change the font size, you create a single style that targets buttons and every button in your window will get that. You can even go as far as every button in your whole application will get this style. And you can go as far down too in the micromanagement to targeting just individual buttons if you so prefer. But to start with, if you've ever done CSS, you're going to be right at home because the, the way that XAML styles work, the idea of creating a base style and then building on top of it, it's exactly the same with CSS and XAML styling. It won't write the same though. We write in XAML. So let's get started. I'm going to switch my view like the last video, scroll up a little bit so I can see the buttons in the text box, and finally make sure in my XAML that I can see the window and the grid because I want to be at the top. So to create a style, we have to put it in a section called Windows Window Resources. So I open up a tag, I put Window Resources, and then I make it multi-line, and then I create my styles inside of that by opening a tag and writing style, closing it, and making it multi-line as well. What we do is at the top of the style, we set what kind of controls you're aiming for, any special properties about the whole style, and then the individual properties go inside. So. Let's make one that targets our buttons, and the way you do that is you put a space here for a property, go target type equals button. Make sure you go to capital B. And now any setting I put in here will apply to every single button on my window. That's the greatest thing about XAML. So the way you create properties in your styles is you open up a tag and you type setter property equals, um, and I'm going to start with background because that's an easy one, value equals, I can't spell, value equals and then you choose the color that you want to use. Let's have a look at Alice Blue. Okay, close it on the same line. That's a nice little blue, but you can see every single button just got that background color applied to it. So it comes straight from my style because I've said just target buttons. So you can add multiple properties just by putting them on singular lines like this. Oh my gosh, I can't spell. Property equals, let's do font size. And let's make the value equal about 16. And you can see that the font size is already applied as well, just like the background color. So I'm just going to put a few more settings here just to make it look a little bit better. I personally don't like borders on buttons, so I'm going to take the border thickness value to zero. Close it on the end of the line. It's starting to look all right. Uh, and I suppose I could probably move those around, but I might actually leave it as is because I don't want to increase the video just because I'm playing around with properties. So the next thing really is to target individual controls. So let's say all these buttons have the style now applied to them automatically. What if I want a couple of those buttons to look a little bit different, okay? What we're going to do then is we're going to create a second style there. So style, okay? Still make sure the target type is button. But what I'm going to do is use this based on property here. So it's based on this style up here. So based on, we go equals, you open up a curly brace inside here, and it's based on my style for buttons, which is called a static resource. So in the curly braces, I put static resource. I put another set of curly braces just to make things simple. Little x colon type button. All right. Hope that is not too confusing. I'll get this out of the way so you can see it. But what I've basically said there is I want you to base this style that I'm about to create on my static resource that I created before, which is of type button. Now, if I gave this style a specific name, which I'm about to show you how to do, I can actually base it on the name of that style rather than all of this curly brace nonsense. But because I want every button to have this style, then I will have to use this as my based on string. 
Now let's give it a name because if I want to be able to target individual buttons, I have to give it a name. And you do that by doing X and I know it says name there, you want key for styles. And in there, I'm gonna call this the clear button. Okay, and hopefully that doesn't break. Now, why has that done that? Okay, I just paused for a second there to try and figure out what the issue was. I didn't actually change anything and it's come back. All I did was run the program and for some reason it worked. So for my clear buttons, and the, you can probably tell why I've called it clear button, because I want to target these three at the top, because they're not really numbers or maths operations. I'm just going to give them a slightly different background, and I'm going to bold the font. So we go setter, property, and let's go background first, and then go value equals. Um, what is a good color? Azure is not a good color, but I'm going to choose it anyway. Now you'll notice there's no updates yet, and that's because I've got a key on this style, I now have to go through the buttons and specify what style they are going to use. Setter, property, font, weight, value is bold, and close it. Now, once I've got this style set up, I need to scroll down through my XAML and find the buttons and give them the style manually. So here's my clear buttons down here. And the way you set the style is you just go style equals open up a curly brace, put static resource, and there's clear button there. No more weird curly braces. And you can see it's a slightly different color and it's bolded the words for me. I probably could have used a better color to illustrate this, but anyway. So, so again, curly braces, static resource, clear button. Of course, I can copy that, paste it there. And now my three clear buttons have one different style, but notice how they've still got no border and that's because it comes from that original style as well. Okay, so that's how you create styles that target controls and then create a style that you can then let the controls target the style. The next step really is then to get one style of a certain control across the entire application because that's the best thing that you can do really is have controls such as text boxes and buttons and things like that which look the same across every single window. The worst thing about some programs is that they change their colors or their styles or their font sizes when you go between different windows. So the way we do that is you do through the app.xaml file. So in your solution explorer, just double click on app.xaml and you can see we've already got application resources set up ready to go for us. So let's set up a style for text boxes. Same thing as before. So open up a thing, style, target type equals text box. All right, and what are my settings going to be? I'm going to turn the border off because I really don't like borders these days. Property border thickness value equals zero. And then I'll put a close it. The next setter property is going to be the font size. And let's make that, oh my gosh, 30. All right, with that just done, let's go back to the main window. And you can see no border and the text is already bigger. I'm going to run the program, hopefully it sticks. And there you are. And if I made any more windows with text boxes, and I'll quickly show you how to do that, just to illustrate, let's right click here, add a window, poodles, because I can. Let's put a text box on him. And there you go. No borders and big text already. So you can see it applies across the entire application. So guys, I hope you learned something about XAML styles. And I'd like to thank you to like, subscribe, and comment down the bottom of the video. But otherwise, thank you very much for watching the video. I'm going to see you in the next one where we're actually going to start making this calculator from scratch. But otherwise, thank you very much again. I'll see you then.